Hello guys, today we're going to be doing a new Hack the Box challenge. And today's Hack the Box challenge that we're going to be doing is going to be called Jeeves, which was a Hack the Box challenge released a couple, I want to say, like almost like three years old. Yeah, around three years old. And uh, today we're going to be doing this challenge today. I mean, before I start this challenge, or before I start this video, I just want to make sure to click on my link down below so you guys can get uh, a discount on Hack the Box because I have an affiliate link. And anyway... That's about it, and let's get started with this uh, video. So, one of the very first things you have to do for this challenge is make sure you download the files. In my case, I already did. Uh, I already downloaded Jeeves, and I already have the file right here. And let's just give it executable permissions, Jeeves. So, I guess one of the very first things you do is just check what kind of file it is, so Jeeves. Looks like it's an executable file, x86, dynamic link, and it's not stripped. So that's pretty fun. What else could we do? We could probably run it to see what it does. Jeeves. Man, so it's asking for a name. So put hello world. Hello. So it prints out our name. Interesting. Interesting enough. Anyway, let's keep on checking what this does. Let's check strings right here. Strings, hello, hope you have a nice day. Well, so gets is one of the very first things I see that like catches my mind because if you don't know the gets function is vulnerable to buffer overflow, the reason why is because there's no balance check. So you could input as much um, as much values as you can because there's no balance. So, and let's see, let's check the stack overflow. It says it right here. Uh no, is okay. Is avoiding standard and I have no standards balance check. So there's no so there's no checks on how long the input could be. So let's say for this example, so I'm guessing is getting our data by using the guess function. So I can make this as long as I can. So let's make this like super long. And eventually, there's no bounds or errors check. So I'm guessing it's gonna make the program it's gonna cause the program to crash. And yes, yeah, segmentation fault. So, yeah. Anyway, we did our basic checks. What we could do, we I could pop it on GDB and do it from there. But let's just use Ghidra. So the, by checking it on Ghidra, it looks like let's see, it's asking for our name, hello, good sir, which what we saw right away, and then we see local forty eight. So it stores our whatever our I guess the name in local forty eight, which is this array. And then a hello, and then it prints it out right here, and then it does a check for local C, is, is this value which is uh ox one three z seven babe. So we check local C and local C, since we assign this value of ox dead beef, or that value right here. So like just by looking at this, and we know that f gets is vulnerable to buffer overflow like the things are clicking right now in my head is that for the most part what we're supposed to do is get a buffer overflow and overwrite the value of local c i know it's a lot but if you're familiar with buffer overflow attacks that's basically the gist of this challenge overflow local 48 which is this so it could uh it could it could overflow to this so it could it could go to this the reason on why this works, uh, the stack. I'm trying to find a good representation. All right, then. So yeah, yeah. So here's a good example how I guess the stack works. So the stack stacks uh, values inside here, and then like uh, there's values like one, two, three, four. In our case, if we go back right here, the stack is gonna hold local forty eight, and it's if we go right here and check Ghidra, 
local 48 is set to ox48 so that's how many values deep it is in the stack and local 48 is if we were to change this there's an option for users to change this so uh, let's just highlight this highlight it and convert it to there should be a conversion button so right here well, I guess there isn't so we just do it real quick OX 48 to decimal what's OX 48 to decimal that's 72 so that's 72 and if we look at what we want to overwrite is local C which is uh, OX 7 OX C so what's OX C to decimal that's 12 so let's see, OX48. Yep. So, so we got 72 and 12. And like I said before, the main goal of this challenge is to be able to, um, for the most part, uh, overwrite local C. And how we will do that is we will fill up the values of 44 with like a random, like, well, in our case, we're going to use a bunch of A's. So we're right to fill this up and then we're going to fill this value up with A's and this value up with A's until we reach local C. And to calculate how many A's we will need to reach local C, all we simply need to do is just subtract OX48 to OXC for the, for the most part. So if we were to do that real quick, 72 minus 12, we will get 60. So what our payload will look like at the end of it is basically 60 values of a plus the address in which we want to change it to so which will be this so we could do this real quick right now on Gidra. i already did it but let's see if i could do it for memory because i was trying to do this problem so yeah okay, and so nano solve the pi solve the pi so what will you do is do from pwn import all and then from phone import all you will like initialize a variable and then you'll connect to the remote host or whatever whatever wherever the challenge is holding it or wherever the challenge is at so i just copy that go right here oh. and then just start ip has to be put in a string and then the port it could be just the number Okay, we got that. And then we'll just do R dot, what is it? Send line. What we're gonna send to this, to this IP, to this port is just a bunch of A's times 60. Plus at the end, we need the address. And then to send the, I guess, hex values to like, or to send like, I guess, address, address values or just specific values through a program or to to whatever you're supposed to send them in little indian format or is it big indian i always forget but just to simply do this just put p64 this converts it to little indian or big indian and then after that we just want to be able to see what we get so it's receive line oh and then when we sense like uh characters we want to send them as byte strings and then after that we just do print and end We'll just do this a bunch of times because I, I literally didn't check how um, just something like that. Hopefully we don't get errors. Or and then after that we just close the port. So let's run this. Python three solve dot pi. Then we're just getting this. So hello good sir, may I have your name? And then I send them a bunch of A's with the value that we're which is this and with along with like the um, the hex representation or like the hex value to make this ox137 babe and then hope you have a good day and this is what it sent and then after that it says please make your acquaintance here's a small gift and then we get the flag so i'll just copy this flag and just paste it inside uh, the submission and that's about it five and this should work hopefully you guys learn something new from this challenge and like network error might be my internet anyway i hope you guys learned something new with this challenge that's all we yeah, yeah challenge completed anyway i got it 
hope you guys learned something new with this challenge and sorry if this was kind of like half paced or like the video quality wasn't that good or my explanation wasn't that good i'll link down below an article that i read that helped me understand this problem a little bit more and also a video that i got inspiration from anyway hope you guys learned something new and uh yeah that's about it peace